Hi guys, it's Monica. I am going to do a tag video and this tag is actually called the Truthful YouTuber Tag. I saw this tag on Sheila, Life with Lily's channel, and before I saw it on Sheila's channel, I saw it on Mary Glitzy Fritzy's channel. The tag was made up by Mel, I think it's Thompson. I'm going to link her channel and I'm going to link Sheila's channel and I'm going to link Mary's channel so you can go check them out and see how they they answered these questions. I figured this will be very interesting because the truthful YouTuber tag, the truthful YouTuber tag, you know, like everything on the internet, everything on the internet, I think truthfully you can't fully 100% believe everything you see and hear on the internet. It is so easy to get wrapped up in the hype, it is so easy to get wrapped up in lies, gossip, you name it, that it's hard for you to really see your way through the forest. And sometimes YouTube has been, for me anyways, it's been a place that I could go to where I could actually look up things, I could see how products looked on other ladies' skin, I could listen to reviews, I could do a lot of different things that I thought would be beneficial and it has. YouTube has been a major, major game changer for me as a mature woman and I'm sure it's been a game changer for many others. So I just thought this was a very interesting tag because it says the truthful YouTuber tag. So here we go. And I am going to have to read these questions, I'm sorry. Number one is have you ever received a product, tried it, didn't like it, and then decided not to review it? Yes, I have. The, the product that comes to mind, and I'm not going to mention the brand, but the product that comes to mind is a, a natural shampoo and conditioner. They had sent it to me for review. I showed it when I got it in a video, and I said that I would review it. It, it stunk. I mean, literally, it stunk. It, it smelled so bad. Um, my husband really had a hard time with me using it. He, we cuddle at night and he did not like putting his, his face up against my hair because it stunk so bad. I also found it to be very drying and it came with a whole lot of hype. So I just never went back and revisited. And since that time, I've, I've seen a lot of other content creators review it. And this just goes to show you that everyone reacts differently to, to products. I thought it stunk, it smelled. I thought it was very drying on my hair. And, uh, but others had glowing reviews on it. So a grain of salt, everything some, somebody talks about, I can talk about a face product, a lipstick or whatever, and it may or may not work for you, but it works for me. Or the color looks great on me and it may not look great on you. It's, it's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. So you really need to take everything with a grain of salt, I think, on, in, on the internet. So number two, products you use alone but don't show or use online. There's really nothing that I wouldn't show or use online. I have not done a get ready with me, you know, for me to show and demo how I physically will say apply makeup or something like that, I've not done. And part of that is because I really don't feel that I am any kind of an expert. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a skincare expert and I certainly am not a makeup expert. I'm just learning as I go. And I say that often, I, I'm experimenting. So my experiments, you know, sometimes they blow up in my face and they, they don't work out that well. So I'm not at the confidence level where I can sit there and do a get ready with me and show you how I'm applying something. Cause I like on my eyes, you know, I'm applying, 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 applying. I go back and forth and go back and forth. I do everything a little bit differently. So no, there's really nothing. I just, everything that I use, I pretty well talked about. Three, products you want, but won't buy because you won't support the brand. I really had to think about this because there are some products that I really feel upset about um, and don't want to support the brand. I think it's because of the mature community as a whole. I think that there are some huge cosmetic companies that just don't recognize the mature community or mature women. And they might come out and say, oh, we're going to support your community. We're going to support the smaller YouTubers. We're going to do this and that. And then they don't, you know, they don't. They gravitate to the large channels, you know, and all of that. And, and in a way, being a businesswoman and also being, you know, savvy as far as the Internet is concerned, 
I can understand that. So yeah, there's a couple of brands that I really don't want to support because I feel they don't support the demographic that I'm in. As much as I would like to try something, I feel they don't support my age bracket, the mature women. Oh, number four, do you have any blocked words? I do. I have a profanity filter. I have a profanity filter on most of my social media. And, um, and I do that because there are some trolls out there and these trolls sometimes are, they just, I call them like flying monkeys. They like zoom in for the kill and all they do is throw trash at you. So I have, I do have profanity filters and I have certain blocked words, absolutely. I, I don't want to come to my channel in the morning after falling asleep and seeing a bunch of F-bombs. And I know for some people it'll be really cool, but to see that in writing, on my channel or to see someone that you know is really ugly in the sense of what they're saying there's something called constructive criticism which I appreciate you may not like how I apply my makeup you may not like how I look you may not like how I sound but you don't have to be nasty about it you don't have to be nasty about it and I often wonder would you be that nasty in real life if we were standing right next to each other would you be that way and it amazes me that someone behind a keyboard feels so empowered that they can just be so vicious and attack and, and just be nasty, nasty, nasty. It just, it blows my mind, but I've been around a while and I've seen it in my industry. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen it off of YouTube. I've seen it in gossip sites. I've seen it all over the place. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, at night I read my um, my iPad. I have a Flipboard, and I read the the um, the British tabloids and the things that they say. You know, I mean, ninety percent of it is made up, but it's so hurtful. You know, why would they say that about Meghan Markle? Why would they say that about Catherine William and stuff? But anyways, I digress. So, yeah, I do have blocked words. Have I ever deleted a comment? Number five. Absolutely, I have a number of times I've deleted a comment and it's usually it's usually some guy looking for a wife or looking for a partner of some sorts. So, you know, they, I just, yeah, get rid of them, block them, report them. I think they're spammers. I, I don't need that. I have never blocked another YouTuber. I have, I have unsubscribed to other YouTuber content creators for, in my opinion, a valid reason, but I've never blocked them and I will still see them occasionally and sometimes I'll even go to their channel. But no, I, I do not have anyone that I have blocked in that sense other than scammers. Number seven, have you ever lied about a product to stay in good terms with the brand? No, I, I don't get PR. Um, well, maybe I get a little tiny bit of PR, if you want to call it that. I do order brand, I do order products from Octoly, and a lot of times Octoly's rules are you have to publish your review within 28 days. And my opinion is that if it's a skincare, if it's something that you're really going to use, it might be difficult to know how that really works in 28 days. So usually sometime near the beginning of that I receive it and it's usually something I really want to try. So I've ordered it from Octoly. Then I might talk about it and be like a first look or first touch or first feel, but I don't consider it to be a product review and I, I would never lie about it. You know, I've, I've talked about products I've received that, you know, hasn't been my cup of tea and that's okay. Number eight, have you ever initially liked a product when you reviewed it and then changed your mind but didn't let your audience know? Um, not really. I can't, I can't think of anything that I've changed my mind on a review on a first look that that shampoo that I talked about comes to mind. I never did a review on it. I just didn't review the product. I'm of the generation that if you don't have something nice to say about something, don't say anything at all. And, and that's usually what happens to me. So if the product is a real bust and I've already talked about it, I'm just not gonna show it. It's not gonna come up in my empties. It's because it's never gonna get used up. But to be honest with you, I am i don't get a whole lot and I've only received Octoly, gosh, I don't know, maybe this last year, mm -hmm. if that long. So 
yeah, I haven't got a whole stock of products, let's put it that way, that I could, that I said I loved and didn't love ultimately or changed my mind on. Number nine, influencers you don't trust. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, there, uh, there are a lot of influencers that I don't trust. And even in the mature beauty community, there are some that I simply, I simply don't trust. Um, and usually I unsubscribe from them and usually I don't support their channels in the sense of going over and watching their videos and commenting. Um, there are also many YouTubers I don't trust in the younger community, you know, there are a lot. So people, sometimes people look at this as I'm in it for the buck and anything for the buck, a fab or anything for a buck. Yeah, I'm not going to mention any names, but there are, there are definitely influencers that I don't trust in all age brackets of YouTube. Influence you trust the most. Number 10, I have a core group of ladies that I chat with almost daily. They know who they are. And it's a very small group. It's a very, very small group. And then I have a group of ladies that I chat with periodically that I've collabed with. So I can, I can honestly say out of, out of all the people on YouTubers, the people that I've engaged with, I'm a gut reaction type of person. I go with my gut when I meet people, when I talk to people. There are, there's, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of influencers that I totally trust and I don't want to name them. I think they know because you've been engaging with me. We've done collabs together. We, we repeatedly support each other and we respect each other. And um, yeah, there are a lot that I actually do trust. Number 11, secret tips or product applications you don't show while on camera. I really don't have any secret tips. I My product application is pretty well everything that I've talked about. I'm kind of an open book when it comes to that product application, how, how I do things. You know, I, I do my eyes completely different. I do my mascara completely different. I've talked about the fact that I put my mascara on in the first thing, you know, after I do my serums and, and all that, and I de-puff a little bit and I, I do things around my eyes. You know, I put my, my Olay and then I go to my mascara. So I kind of do that completely different than most people do. I also never use an eyelash curler. An eyelash curler totally grosses me out. I can't look at one being applied and I get like willies when I see one. So, you know, in the store or something like that. I just, I just don't like eyelash curlers whatsoever on my eyes, they scare me. Have I ever showed one product that in actually using another? Nope, nope, never. Have I ever not disclosed a sponsorship? Nope, I've never had a sponsorship. I've actually had companies that want to sponsor me to do a video and I would not agree to it because I, you know, I'm not gonna agree to, spon to do a video and have them sponsor me and pay for it on a product I don't know. You know, to me it makes no sense. So the answer is absolutely not. I've never done that and I've never accepted a sponsorship yet. Doesn't mean that I won't someday in the future. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. As long as you believe in what you're talking about, then I think it's all good, 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 good. Have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand? No, no, I really, I haven't at all. Number 15, have you ever bandwagoned with other people's thoughts on a particular product? No. No. 16. Things that creators do to get on your nerves. Oh my gosh. Um, things that creators do. There, you know, there's really an awful lot of things that people can do that can get on my nerves. And I think the biggest thing is that it, the dishonesty. The dishonesty. And I know this is the honest YouTubers tag. So the dishonesty out there is really, really gets on my nerves. Uh, and I, I shouldn't say that it gets on my nerves in the sense that it bothers me to a degree that I'm freaking out over it, but it gets on my nerves because I see the, the fake growth of a channel who buys subscribers or a channel that buys views. And I know it's a business decision they made to do it that way. They're taking the shortcut or maybe the only way to get to where they want to be. And where they want to be is they want to get a ton of PR and they want to get all these products. And you know, so when a brand looks at your channel and 
you've only been around for a year and you have a hundred thousand subscribers or something that's like whoa and you you know and you don't have a viral video but yeah so a brand isn't going to be thinking about how'd you get those numbers they're just going to be saying this is an influencer that has huge influence and that's why people buy subscribers i think that's why people buy views because they want to be perceived as an influencer with a huge range of influence so they can get products and enjoy things they can enjoy some perks some freebies maybe trips maybe you know gala events maybe whatever and make a lot of money so i think the people that take the shortcut and that to me is the most dishonest thing about youtube is those people that pay and buy and you know in my inbox just the other day i had an email from someone who started out very complimentary i love your channel you know it's really great channel we we admire what you're doing but you could get a lot more subscribers and for a very small fee i mean i'm talking small fee i could buy a couple of thousand subscribers overnight i could wake up tomorrow and have them and to some people that's very very appealing and i know there are some people that have a tremendous growth on their channel and they're not buying subscribers so it's not I don't want you to think that it's everybody, but there are some people that do that. And there are some people that totally manipulate what they're showing or even the image they're showing. In other words, you know, heavily, heavily filtered content, which isn't real life. I always say that just like on our business cards in real estate, you know, you can go to glamour shots and you can get all dolled up and have this beautiful business card with this glamorous picture of you. But if someone met you in real life, would they recognize you? And that's that's the thing, you know, to me, I don't want to be like, wow, do you see her there? Do you see her in real life? Whoa, what a difference, you know? And so when I vlog, you know, granted when I'm sitting here, I do have lights, I'm lit up. Otherwise, I, you wouldn't be able to see me. But when I do my vlogs, it is more real life. You get to see my jowls. You get to see my wrinkles. You get to see pretty well that and more. So, um, so yeah, you know. I think we should all be real on YouTube and, and like I say, everyone has their own plan and their own why. And if I were to say anything to anyone new starting a channel is make sure you know what your why is and you stick to that plan, you stick to that why. And if your why is you want to get to 100,000 subscribers and you're willing to buy your way to it, go for it. It's your, it's your why. It's your channel. Doesn't mean that I'm going to support it <laughs> or anyone else. but you will have your fake views and you will have your fake subscribers and you will get a ton of products and that's totally fine. So yeah, that's probably the biggest drawback to YouTube is the dishonesty out there, the fake, the fakeness, you know? And so you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to recognize what's fake and what isn't and don't trust the wrong people. So that's, my answer is I probably said more than I should, but that's my answer. So thank you so much for watching guys.